Hello and welcome everyone. This is Jennifer McGuire and thanks so much for visiting. So today I thought I would just share with you a few ways to do spotlight techniques on your cards. Now there's nothing new here. These are techniques that have been popular for some time, but I thought it'd be fun to pull them together and make some suggestions for looking at your stamps differently to get a different look using a spotlight technique. So I'm hoping that this will inspire you to give something a try. And once again, I'm making a bunch of cards in this video. I'm making multiples of several of the designs uh, because I am just in mass producing mode because of all that's going on in this world in the past few months. So I will share tips for that also. Let's start out with my card examples that have this beautiful Birds of Paradise image. With this one, I'm going to show you how you can spotlight one image, but repeatedly stamp it in the background also. Okay, so I'll be using this new Altenew Birds of Paradise stamp set. This has two Birds of Paradise, one that faces to the left and one that faces to the right, and lots of very easy to line up layering images. Here's the guide that comes with it, so you can see it even makes suggestions of colors to use, and then some card ideas inside of that, and this comes with the stamp set. So I'm going to make multiple cards, each a little bit different, using the set, but all with the same technique. I'm using my Misty stamping tool because I plan to make multiple cards. Each time I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half, which is big enough to cover a note card, or I can trim it down if I want to change the design. So I'm starting with what will be my focal image, the spotlight light image. This is the one that will be done in color. I wanted to make sure the position was just right, which is kind of off to the right hand side. This will be a horizontal card. I'm stamping it on a bunch of panels using black ink. Once I'm done with that, I'll start adding the layering in. And I'm listing the different colors of Altenew dye ink that I use up in the top left corner, so you can check that out if you're interested. I start by doing the first layer of the flower, then I go to the first layer of the leaf, then I go to the second layer of the flower, then the second layer of the leaf. The reason I switch between the two is it gives the first layer of ink a bit of time to absorb and dry. That way when you come with the second layer, it looks more crisp and doesn't kind of bleed in or blend in too much. Now you can see here I'm making, I think I made maybe 15 card panels in total and ended up messing up a couple, but that's okay. I ended up with many cards after this process was over. You can see how it's easy to line these up and just change the colors each time. I am speeding through this because it is basic stamping and I want to focus on the technique. With the purple here in the middle, there are two layers, a light purple and a dark purple. And I did another thing I like to do when mass producing in my Misty stamping tool. I line up one of the images at the top and stamp it, and then slide my paper down to the bottom and stamp the second layer there. That's just another way to save time. Once I was done with all of that first stamping, it was time to create a few masks. I stamped a few of each of the images onto a piece of Gina K Masking Magic. You could use any masking paper for this. I like the Masking Magic because it is thicker. It's kind of got a plastic feel to the top of it. So that way you can stamp on it multiple times and the ink won't bleed through. I was gonna to need to use these masks multiple times so I thought that was a good option. I then cut out the flowers, but really only the base of the flowers. No need to cut the top portion. Now I'm coming in with the second image and I'm putting that to the left of our first one. None of these will be stamped with color, just the outline. So I'm stamping this one with black ink on a few of the panels, but on some of the other panels, I wanted to do a lighter background just to show you a different option. This time I'm using a lighter gray ink called Morning Frost, and I'm going to double stamp that just to make it a little bit darker. So the spotlight technique can be done with black images in the background, like bold contrast, or you could do a soft gray or any other soft color. I just wanted to show you the differences and you'll see that when the cards are completed. Now I need to do a bit of masking. So I'm putting my first mask over that large flower and then the other mask over the smaller flower. Now I can line up those same stamps to overlap with the first. Overlapping in this way really pulls a card together. A simple mask can make a huge difference. So on this one, I'm doing light gray again for those additional images. And then I will do the other ones with black ink for those additional images. So the spotlight technique here is to use an outline image, 
but only have one filled with color. It's best to start with your spotlight image first like I did, so that becomes the focus. Now on a few of my panels, I'm going to stamp even more flowers, so I'm putting more masks back down, always just reusing masks that I have already stamped. And now I can stamp additional images on some of these. Again, because of masking, our spotlight image will stay in the forefront. It will stay the focus, and these other images will kind of be below it into the background. So I encourage you, if you're going to do spotlight stamping, to try some with bold backgrounds of black and white, and then just the pop of color, or try softer backgrounds, and then just the dark, bold pop of color in your spotlight. Many ways you can do this. Okay, so after I've had all my panels stamped, I wanted to step some of them up even more. And I thought it'd be fun to add a border, stamped border, to the bottom of some of those panels. Again, each of these cards will be a little different. So on one of my cards, I use the Altenew Pinstripe Stamp, which you've seen me use a lot in videos. It gets a lot of use in my craft room. And then on another, I'll use another stamp set that gets a lot of use, and that is the Altenew Swiss Dot Background Stamp. In fact, I just have to give this one a bath because I've used it so much. Just use a little soapy water and clean it off, and then it'll be good as new. It gets a lot of love. Okay, so anyways, I have these two that I want to use to create a little bit of a stamped border on some of the panels. So my Misty is a little bit too small to have the stamp fully in and the panel fully in. So I have my panel kind of hanging out the top and I taped it there. Works just fine. Now I'm lining up the top of the stamp towards the bottom of the panel. Once I have that in my Misty, I need to add the masks to my stamping. I want the dots to be around our flowers, but not on top of them. In this case, you could cut little stems only to create the mask because we're really only overlapping with the stems, but I had the full mask, so I decided to use those. Okay, so now I'm inking up the top of this with black ink, and we're just gonna put black dots at the bottom of this panel. I thought this kind of went along with the bold contrast that we'll get with the spotlight stamping technique. And there you can see how we have that fun border along the bottom. On another one, I'm going to use the pinstripe that I showed you. I'll do the exact same thing, where I tape my panel kind of hanging out of the misty, and then I can put down my mass and then stamp along the bottom. I did some with black ink and some with that morning frost gray ink. By the way, hanging your panel outside of the misty is fine. Just make sure you don't get ink on the door because it might transfer onto that paper. Okay, now that I have all my panels stamped, it's time to turn these into cards. And again, I made each one a little bit different. On most of them, I used a You Are So Loves sentiment from the Altenew Sentiment Strips 2 stamp set. I've used a lot of these sentiments many times, and I'll be using them again later in this video. Most of the cards that I'm making today are going to a church. It's actually a sister church of a church that I go to, and they are about 90% African American, and I thought it would be nice to deliver to them a box of cards, just telling them that we appreciate them and love them. I know the world is tough to be in right now, and so I thought this would be encouraging. Card making is my love language, so that's what I do. So anyways, I put a You Are Loved white heat embossed sentiment strip right along the bottom of my note card, then a thin strip of gold glitter cardstock, and then a black cardstock strip. Right above that, I'm gluing one of the panels that we made, and then I trimmed off the excess. I thought it'd be fun to try putting a sentiment right along the bottom, which I don't think I've ever done, and I ended up liking it. I like that pop of orange on the bottom. However, I decided I didn't like the white heat embossed message. I changed my mind a lot. So here I decided to replace it with a black stamped message. I felt like it stood out and was a little more bold that way. Okay, so let's uh, look at the rest of the cards I made and I'll show you a few more stamp sets. Now I did use that Altenew Simple Sentiments 2 stamp set a few times, but I also used sentiments from this Altenew Build a Fla Flower Columbine stamp set. This is another new one. I haven't used the flower from it yet, but I wanted to show you their stamping guide over there on the right so you can see what that flower forms to be, which I think is beautiful. But I just used the Hello Darling and Thinking of You stamp images on these cards. Now in this particular one where I used that thinking of you, I thought this card needed a little something extra to it, so I decided to make a metallic thread bow. 
I use the new Altenew metallic thread that comes in a pack of three. It's got silver, gold, and copper. And I did a triple bow from gold. That just means I took three strands of gold and tied them in a bow together, made it a little messy, and just did a dot of liquid adhesive to hold it in place at the top of the flower. So there you can see that completed card. I also added some clear gemstones for a bit of sparkle, but not too much distraction. So you can see how the spotlight is that bold colored flower right there off centered with the sentiment above it. Here's another example. This one I had stamped over the bottom portion with the morning frost ink and that pinstripe stamp. And then I added the sentiment strip, a gold cardstock, a glitter strip, and a black strip. I also added clear gemstones to most of these. Now this one has a little bit of that gray colored uh, pinstripe and the gray flowers in the background. And I ended up putting a white border along the bottom. So I trimmed that one quite a bit. Here's the first one I made with the You Are Loved. I like to position the sentiment near or on top of the focal point spotlight image because that's where your eye is going. Here we have some uh, lots of flowers in the background in gray and the pinstripe along the bottom. So you can see how there the flower really stands out more because I used the light gray ink in the background. On this one, it looks like it was matted with the orange coral color and black cardstock, but really those are thin strips glued to the top and the bottom of the stamped panel. Here are some of the bold ones that have black around it. So this has the black pinstripe on the bottom for a fun border, and then the extra flowers, and the example on the left has the dots. I prefer the black ink for the background instead of the gray. It just adds more contrast, but then having that one flower in spotlight really makes it pop. Okay, let's do another example where I have one large solid image, but then I spotlight the sentiments on it. This is a really easy technique that can be done with any large image, especially ones that you love, but you don't wanna take the time to color, like this one. This is a new set from Altenew, has some great, lovely sentiments on it. But that large image on the top, I thought was gorgeous. I wanted to use it, but I'm making a bunch of cards, so I decided not to color it and instead do a spotlight sentiment technique. This is one of my favorites and can be done with many different stamps. Okay, so I have a bunch of white note cards that are four and a quarter by five and a half inches top folding. And I'm using my stamping tool once again because I'm going to stamp this many times. I'm positioning the flower over to the left. Don't worry that it doesn't reach to the bottom. We'll fix that later. Now I've positioned this in my stamping tool and it's going to stay there for a long time. Don't remove it when you're done and you'll see why in a bit. Now on most of my cards, I'm stamping this with Altenew Obsidian Black Ink, which is a nice dark black ink. You could do a color, but I think it's more impactful if this is black. Now I, again, am going to stamp this on a bunch. I think I ended up stamping it on 30 cards, but I only finished about 10 or so for the video. I'm gonna go back and do the others later. In addition to doing a white note card with a dark image, I wanted to do a dark note card with a white image. You could use black cardstock, but I decided to go with dark gray for something different. And this again is a note card. Put it in the same spot and I'm stamping with Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. And then I will white, add white embossing powder and heat set it. This way we have the white image on the dark background for just a different uh, look. So I will show you what both look like in the end and you can see if either of them are options you would like to try. Now that I have a bunch of note cards ready, let's get our sentiment strips. Now for the sentiment strips, I'm using colored cardstock scraps that I had. We're going to stamp the sentiment repeatedly on these and then cut them down to make many strips at once. Here's the trick I do. I'm lining up my sentiment, you are so loved, in one of the grid line rows on the grid of my Misty stamping tool. I then put my cardstock in there and I'm going to stamp this with black ink. After I've stamped it with black ink, I'm going to move the cardstock up one grid line. So watch, I'm going to shift it up one grid line and then stamp it again. Then I'll shift it up another grid line and stamp it again. And I'm going to repeat this till I reach the top of the stamping tool. So each of these sentiments will be spaced one grid line apart. A grid line on this is a quarter of an inch. It's a really handy measuring tool and allows you to make lots of sentiment strips at once. 
This is great if you're mass producing or if you just want to make additional sentiments to save for later. Now, instead of trying to continue to go on that side, I'm just flipping my cardstock over and doing the same on the other side. That way I can end up with lots of sentiment strips out of this one piece of cardstock. I think this cardstock piece started at five and a half by four and a half. Now this is the fun part. You take your Tim Holtz trimmer or any trimmer that you have. On the Tim Holtz trimmer, each of the guidelines in the back is also a quarter of an inch. So each time I cut and move my cardstock over one grid line, cut, move it over one grid line and continue to do that. And that will cut these perfectly spaced for these quarter inch strips and the sentiment be positioned right at the center. So I find this to be a really handy trick when I'm mass producing or if I want to make additional sentiments for later. Now when you get to the end of your piece, this small piece, it's hard to cut it. So I temporarily glue on the back a handle. That piece of purple cardstock is just a scrap and I'm using it as a handle. Now I can hold on to that to continue to cut all of this all the way down to that last piece on the edge. Creating a handle like this is very helpful with many trimmers. So now I have a bunch of sentiments and I did the same thing on different colors of red, orange, and yellow cardstocks. Now it's time to add these onto my card. With this simple of a design, you really wanna make sure these strips are straight. So I use a T ruler. You put it up against the side of your card Run your liquid adhesive close to the edge of the T-ruler and then pop your sentiment on and press it up against the edge of the T-ruler. Then you can be sure that first one's straight and the rest you can glue right up against it and you know they will be straight too. I decided to put each of my sentiments right up against each other so it was like this bold stripe across my card. Once I have them all glued down, I can just trim the excess that hangs off the edge. But now we need to stamp back in the portion of the image that we covered with the cardstock. So I'm putting it back in my MISTI and that stamp is still in the same location. Now you don't have to do this, but I did put some scrap paper or post-it tape over the area above and below the cardstock strips. You don't need to do that. I just wanted to be careful. I put more black ink on my image, stamped it again, and that adds the stamping back in place on top of the colored strips. So I made a bunch of cards, some with these purple and blue papers too. Now for these, I did a bunch of different sentiments, all from that Altenew Sentiment Strips 2 stamp set. I thought all of these would be encouraging for the cards I plan to give to this congregation. Now you could do any sentiments for here. You could do a bunch of stripes and then stamp a big sentiment on it. Sky's the limit with this technique. On some of the cards, I left them plain. On others, I added clear or black gemstones to the background. But this particular sentiment spotlight technique is excellent with background stamps or when you have large images like this one. Now, I did the same for our white images on the dark gray note card. So I added the strips on top of our white heat embossing, put it back into our MISTI, stamped it again with the Versamark ink, and then added the white embossing on top of it. You don't need to add the scrap paper, but I wanted to make sure I got a clean result and it doesn't take time, much time to do that. By the way, I did extend all of my images with either a black pen or white pen at the bottom there, just so that it would reach the bottom of my card. That's an easy trick that no one will ever know you did and it makes it fill your card better. So I made several cards this way. On this one, I just did one sentiment on that bottom strip where I white heat embossed, I appreciate you. By the way, in the uh, sentiment stamp set, the sentiment is actually, I appreciate your kindness, but I cut the sentiment to change it to, I appreciate you. So you can get a lot out of your sentiment stamps simply by changing what you ink or if you cut it up. So I hope with this card example and the white and black version that you try doing a sentiment spotlight technique. Okay, my next example is to do a window spotlight. So in this case, there's simple stamping on the outside with a window that shows bold stamping on the inside. Then when you open it, you see the rest of that bold image. This can be done with many different stamps and is really one that I think I'll have to do again in the future. Now, this is the Altenew Blooming Mandalas stamp set. I love that large circle image on the top, but I didn't use it in this video. I'm gonna to have to save it for another. I use that half circle on the bottom 
but it would work great with that top one too. I think that top one would be fun to color. Maybe do an eclipse spotlight technique. If you've never done that technique, I'll link to a video up here in the top right, and you can give that a try using this image. Okay, for this, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card opened in my Misty. I'm lining up this half circle image with the crease of the note card. I'm stamping this with Sunray ink. You could use any ink you want. I ended up doing a few different versions of this. After I've stamped this, I'm going to take my card and watch, I'm going to just flip it over. So watch, I'll take it and I just flip right vertically, there you go, and put it back in my Misty. This time we're going to stamp the same image in the same location, but using black ink. This will end up being the inside of our card, that yellow will end up being the outside of our card. I ended up making three cards like this, one with yellow on the front, one with gray on the front, and one with blue on the front. Now for the yellow one, I decided to cut a window to follow the pattern of the stamp. So watch, I'm just kind of cutting along this scallop circle here in the stamp. So I just cut all the way up to the crease edge. And I'll do that on both sides, on the left-hand side here and on the right-hand side. Once my cutting has reached the creased edge, we can go ahead and cut the flap off with a trimmer. Now, I started this card, I didn't end up finishing it because I wasn't happy with the coloring I did, but I wanted to show you this process because this was another way to create a window with this design. I'll finish the other ones in a moment. Okay, so now I can go ahead and put this in my trimmer, line the folded edge up with the edge of my trimmer, watch, I'll just line it up there, and then cut off the rest of that instead of using scissors. It gives you a nice straight edge. So that's one way to do this spotlight window technique. You could do this with any large image you have. It works really great with mandalas. Okay, now I had the blue version here. You can barely see it, but I'm going to use a circle for this one. I like this one better for some reason. I have a large circle die and I'm taping it onto my card right along the pattern. And I'm going to do partial die cutting. So I have a die cut machine here and I'm putting the top of the cutting plate so it lines up with the crease on our note card. Anything under the cutting plate to the left will cut. The part of the circle hanging out to the right won't cut. So we're only cutting through the mandala up to the score line. Okay, so I'll go ahead and remove my tape carefully and the circle die, and then we're going to close our card and use the trimmer once again to do a straight edge right along the crease. So you just put the crease right up to the cutting edge and cut along that, and there we have a fun window design on our card. I also did a gray version too that I ended up not finishing. We're gonna finish just the blue example here. On this card, I used a shine sentiment die from Altenew. In this set is a bold shine and a thin shine. You can layer them together, but I just used the thin and cut it from black cardstock and glued it onto the front of the note card. I stamped Celebrating You Today underneath it with black ink, and that's from the Altenew Sentiment Strip 2 stamp set I showed you earlier. Now I added some gemstones, but I also added a lot of Copic marker coloring to the image on the inside. I also added some shimmer pen to it so it had some shine. Now the cool thing about this card is it's got a spotlight window. You only see that circle portion on the top, which I could have made smaller if I wanted to. But when you open it up, you see all of that image. So you could do just a basic circle window spotlight technique where you have a circle on the front of your card and you see just a bit of your scene went from the outside, but then when you open it, you see it all. So this spotlight technique or idea can be used in many ways. These are just a few. Okay, my last set of cards for today's video uses a layering stamp set to show you how you can do a spotlight technique by using all the layers for one focal point image and using a single layer for the background. I've done a similar technique in a video before and I'll link here at the top right if you want to check out that video for more. All the different variations I did for this card set are using the same new Altenew stamp set. This is an incredible stamp set and will probably be on my favorites list for this year. It has this large flower, large leaf, and you can use the layers together or separately. Check out that top left there. That's just using the dotted layer only, such a soft, beautiful look. So I thought it would be perfect to use for this spotlight layering technique. So once again, I'm starting with the main spotlight image and stamping that first. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note or uh, white cardstock panel. 
And I'm stamping this with black ink and look how amazing that looks. It's a pixelated image of little dots. It's just amazing. Now I'm gonna stamp this on a bunch of panels with black ink. Then I'm going to change it up and on some of the panels, I'm going to use a colored ink. So for some of my panels, the main focal point image will be black with color. And then in some, it'll be color with lighter color. As you can see here, I'm doing a dark pink color. So I wanted to show you many variations of the spotlight technique once again. I personally ended up liking the black for it. I think it was more impactful, but you could do which either, whichever works for you. Okay, so after I've done this first detailed layer in that corner, I'm going to add the focal point leaf. So this will also be in color and also be spotlight. So I stamped that with black ink on all the panels where I'm using the black ink, and then in colored ink or dark colored ink on all of my colored pa uh, stamped panels. So we're just getting the first layer of our spotlight image done. Now again, this particular stamp set is excellent for the spotlight layer stamping technique, but if you want to see more examples, check out that video that I'm linking to. Okay, now in the other area of our card, like the background, I'm going to stamp the same images, but on most of them I'm using a light gray ink. It's that morning frost gray ink. So it's like a subtle background. But on some of the others, I'm doing it with black. So these will end up just being black and white images. We'll add color to our spotlight later, but I wanted to finish with this image before we moved on to adding the color. So what I'm going to do is fill the background either with gray stamping on these colored ones or with black stamping. So I can do both a leaf and a flower at the same time and I'm just filling up around our colored images or our focal point images. This is a very fast process if you're making one card at a time and a very easy process if you're mass producing. Especially if the images are large like the one that I chose, it's pretty quick to fill in that entire background. This is such a fun way to get a new life out of your layered stamp sets. Okay, so now that I filled up my background, you can see here this is what the black looks like. Isn't that cool? All of that is done with black ink. Now we're going to color or add the color to the spotlight images only. So I'm going with the solid image in that stamp set and I'm stamping this with a sea breeze ink and I keep getting this white spot there. I realized there was something on my stamp. So I inked it up and stamped it again. And that ended up giving me that solid blue. And isn't that a beautiful image? I will go back and fill in the center in a bit. So now I'm adding a soft color ink to each of the main spotlight images, that large flower there in the bottom corner and the large leaf on the bottom left. Then I went back and added the layering images to the center of the flower too. This is an incredibly easy image to layer because the layers line up on the outside edge. Okay, so I finished all of those backgrounds and I ended up with a bunch of backgrounds. Now it's time to turn them into cards. Now I originally thought I'd go with this design here. So I used the Altenew Hello and Hugs die set. It has both the words Hello and Hugs and the shadow dies. I use the Hello with black cardstock and the shadow with white. Then I have a sentiment strip behind that that says just for you and that's from that Altenew sentiment strip 2 stamp set that I've used many times in this video. I thought I was going to go with this design for all of them but I felt like the hello covered up too much of that beautiful flower. So for the rest of the cards I changed my design and I used the new Altenew uh, label die set. Now this actually coordinates with this stamp set that I didn't use and I don't have it's this one on the right but I wanted to show it to you. There are different sizes of the labels, so you can layer them nicely. I used a few different sentiment sets, including the older Altenew Wildflower Garden set. I use this You're In My Prayer sentiment many times, thought it was perfect for today, as is the Incredible Human Being sentiment from the Incredible Stamp Set from Altenew. Now I did also use a hello and for you sentiment from the Altenew Wild Ferns stamp set. I've used this one many times in videos and that's a great general sentiment and you can write more specific and meaningful sentiment inside of the card for those. So I glued my panels onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I could have stamped directly on the front of the note card but I wasn't sure where I was headed with this design. Now I die cut three blue labels and glued them together for a stacked look. 
Then on top of that, I'm gluing a silver cardstock strip. And I just like press it down over that layered die cut and then down onto the background so it kind of bends over it. Then I have the For You sentiment on a white label. Have three white labels on top of each other and glued that on top. So lots of dimension. Now I also did one with a black strip across it and that's the card you see on the right. I decided I liked the black strip better. I felt like it stood out more against the background. I just change things a lot and I wanted to leave this in here to encourage you. If you put something together and you're not sure about it, try something different. You can carefully take your card apart, not ruin it and try to improve it so that you feel more comfortable with what you have. And I like that one much better. And again, that sentiment is from the Wild Fern set. I have a specific message that I'll, I will print on the inside of these cards and then I'll write a personal message to my family will help me with that. Okay, so now let's go through all of these. Now for these, I did black stamping all over the card and then did a spotlight of color on the main flower and the leaves. I did the you are in my prayers sentiment and I put silver gemstones to the right and the left just for a little bit finished look. I thought that this covered up less of the main flower by using the small label. Then here we have a pink and blue version too. The fun thing about mass producing a card like this is you can try different colors and see what appeals most to you and make more of that particular one. In this case, I did sun ray on both of the flowers, but I didn't really like that yellow. Here's the yellow, the sun ray, and I did a gold cardstock behind the sentiment label. I wasn't thrilled with that color. I don't know why, it just didn't appeal to me. So on the other one, I stamped over the yellow with coral berry, and I ended up with this orangey peach color, and I like that much better. So sometimes if you stamp with one color ink and you don't like it, stamp on top of it with another color. The mixed look might give you something that you like better in the end. Now here I have two different versions. On the right, the focal point image is black with color. And then this one in my hand here is color with color. And then all of the images in the background are the light gray ink. I trimmed these particular ones down and added them to a light gray note card and then stamp the sentiment right onto the background using the sets I showed you earlier. Now here you can see the purple versions of this and the Hello Darling is from the stamp set I showed you at the beginning of this video. I believe it was the Columbine stamp set. Okay, here are two different versions of the pink flower. Notice on the left, the center I did a little black and on the right, I just kept it pink. So you can even change little layers to get different looks. The more you experiment with layering sets, the better you'll be at them and the more comfortable you'll be using them. I also like this one a lot. This is the coral berry color favorite of mine. And I did the black with the bright color and then gray around it. I ended up making a bunch of panels like this, but I left the sentiment off. So when I need a particular occasion, I can go back and add any sentiment I want and make it into a quick card. Here's one where I used a pink note card for a pop of color around the outside edge. So I have lots of variations here, but I think by creating all those, you can get a better idea of what you might like to create. Okay, so there are just a few of the many ways you can do a spotlight technique on your card, either using layering stamps, coloring, windows, anything. I hope you'll try this with the supplies you have, but if you want to check out what I use, I do have that linked below in my YouTube description to multiple places. If you want to see more spotlight techniques, you can check out these videos in the center here. I really appreciate the time that you spend with me, and please everyone take care. Give yourself a big hug from me, and I will be back with another video soon.